Hey everyone, we're going to work on a Halloween swirl today. This one is a four color swirl, basically a freestyle. Um, if you are a beginning soap maker or a beginning mountain pour soap maker, um, please check out my beginner series uh, playlist for mountain pour uh, on my YouTube channel and get to know some of the techniques there and um, let that uh, list help you make some decisions on the types of soap you're using, etc., and learn about the important, all important temperatures and all the good stuff you'll need before you try swirling. Also, check out my swirling playlist that gives you a variety of other swirl techniques to start with. None of those lists are complete yet because I am still adding to them. My channel's not, uh, not real old <laughs> yet, but I'm working on building it as fast as I can. Um, for those of you who have seen my swirl videos before, this one is slightly different. This is not an acorn swirl. I don't even know what to call it. I think I said a minute ago, I'm calling it a freestyle swirl. If anyone knows that um, if there is a technical name for this type of swirl, please let me know in the comments because um, I just don't know. I don't think it's, it might be comparable to some type of a technique in the um, cold process world, but it doesn't give the same results as, as those. So I'm not sure if, if it even correlates at all. Anyway, let's do, jump into it. I'm, I'm working on some Halloween colors. These are kind of contemporary Halloween colors uh, that you see now. You used to, when I was growing up, you saw orange and you saw green and black, and that was about it. And then, um, over recent years, well, even when my kids were little, they started adding hot pink and black or purple and black or purple and green. So we're doing purple, orange, and hot pink, sort of. It's actually two shades of purple. One that kind of as compared to the darker purple looks a little bit like hot pink. It's, it's definitely a more pinkish purple. Um, the colorants I'm using are coming up on the screen, so I'm not going to go into each one in detail. I'm more going to talk about the technique because you choose whatever colors you like for your soap. Um, I'm, I'm doing a few in a series for Halloween, and so this is just the first in that series. Um, what, I, what I wanted to say about that uh, pigment that I was stirring right there, the Mad Micah's Grape Ape, um, any neon pigment needs to be stirred quite well. And really, if, as you're, um, adding it in alcohol and you really do need to, to disperse it in something, alcohol or glycerin, something like that before you add it to your soap. Other micas, sometimes you can get away with just adding it directly to the soap, depending, um, on the technique you're doing, on the type of soap you're doing, but Definitely the neon pigments need to be kind of mushed up a little bit. Um, I almost think like uh, pestle and mortar needs to be ground a little bit. Now, I will say this, the Mad Micas, and I am affiliated with them, but I'm not saying this for this reason. They're not paying me to say anything about their, their products. One of the things that led me to um, stick with Mad Micas is their neons. Their neons are a finer... Um, quality. They're a finer um, particle, I guess. I'm not sure, but they break up a little, uh, quite a bit easier than some others that I've worked with in the past. But they still will clump. If you're not careful, you'll end up with spots in your soap, um, which again, depends on the look you're going for. Sometimes that might work just fine for you. But um, I did, yeah, I'm just adding some glitter now. Mystic Gold, I think, was this one. I'm actually not positive on that. I'm going to have to look it, look it up because um, I was toying back and forth between two different colors of Soap Safe Glitter, and I think that's the one I ended up with. Um, I did add, if you'll notice, I did add a tiny bit of titanium dioxide to the neon. Um, just a little bit will give it a brightness that it's lacking and, and increase the opacity a little bit. Um, but not much is needed. Uh, of course, you can add it until you like the look of it. It's not going to change or morph. That only happens, um, the colors themselves 
unless it's got vanillin in the fragrance that gonna, that's going to change the soap color, the colorants themselves are not going to morph. Um, the reason you saw me adding that orange to a kind of orange looking soap base there is I had it and I wanted to use it up and I knew I was using orange and the fragrance went well with uh, that soap because that soap is actually it comes with a little bit of fragrance in it uh, the apple ice how uh, no ice apple honey wine something like that it's a premium um, it's a premium soap from crafter's choice and it actually does have wine in it uh, I was trying to use up that batch because it's gotten a little dark. Some of mine, I have some that have been just sitting there. Um, I've been, I mostly use crisp, premium crystal clear, and sometimes some of the other soaps that I have on hand get ignored, and um, the color can darken on some of those if they just sit around. So um, that one is not going to hurt the color of the orange soap. So I used a little bit, and because the fragrance is a bit fruity. Um, it went quite well with the fragrance I'm using, which is uh, orange cranberry. Honestly, because it's a very it's got a lot of very sweet notes to it, it smells like candy to me. And um, it works very well for a candy type, uh, just a generalized candy fragrance. And I thought Halloween and gathering lots of candy, um, that's what this made me think of. So it worked perfectly for this soap. Um... Uh, one thing to note when you're doing this kind of swirl, I kind of just dove in quickly, um, is you want you want to have them all melted because you're alternating. It's almost impossible to keep them all at the same temperature. I do have, if you'll notice, I have two buckets that are far larger and more full than the others. That's just the way I like to do it. You could do four equal buckets of soap. Just divide the volume you're um, mold holds into four equal parts if you want. This is all aesthetic. This is all the art of it is what you choose to do with a technique. And I had more, way more, uh, not way more, but I had a lot more of the um, Harold's Purple Crayon, that darker bluish purple, and then a little bit less of the Grape Ape, and it just kind of went down from there. A little, little less orange and then a little less of the clear. The clear is the clear and orange are more accent colors. Um, the clear with the glitter, especially, it's just going to help give a pop of glitter every so often. And the clear offers a chance for light to shine through every once in a while, and for it, the it to kind of give a little barrier between colors every so often. So because um, you don't just want it all to mix together. Of course, that is more. Um, more due to the temperatures of your soap. Um, all of these I started pouring at around, um, for the two larger colors, I started pouring around 116, something like that. The uh, smaller ones, because I ended up having to nuke them again, especially that orange, at the, oh, sorry, orange, because I thought it was melted and through and it wasn't. I took it out of the microwave before it was done. Sometimes you do that to let it melt the last bit of soap so you don't overheat it. And I kind of forgot about it and then went back and it hadn't finished um, melting the rest. So at the last minute, I stuck in the microwave so it was too hot to start with. That's why I started with all of the other colors. Um, and, and I wanted to be particularly careful with the orange because the orange is what could throw a wrench in the whole thing. It's also what can make it super beautiful, but... Orange and purple do not make a good color mix. It does work. I mean, they do. Um, hmm. They are a good color combo together, but when you mix them, like you're actually blending colors, you're going to get brown. So the more pink of the purples in that, the grape ape, is going to mix better with um, the orange than, than the darker purple that's more blue. Um, and you'll see there are a couple spots where in my soaps it starts to swirl just a little bit with that darker purple and gives a bronze effect, um, which I don't mind. It, it came out fine. And I was very careful with the temperatures. I don't know if you saw me dump, not dump, but pour a little bit of alcohol in that orange soap, um, just a tiny bit. Um, 
about a teaspoon maybe. It just helps it cool down faster. Sometimes I'll spritz it and stir to cool down, but if it really needs to cool a little faster, I might uh, put in a half teaspoon, a teaspoon, and stir it in. It evaporates quite quickly when your soap is hot, and it will help cool it down pretty fast. Um, and since you're balancing a bunch of different colors at once and trying to keep them melted but cool, it's 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 a trick. It's a game sometimes. So that's a little tool to help you on occasion. I wouldn't put a lot in. I wouldn't put more than, say, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half in um, in a container because, um, I don't know, it, it's still going to evaporate. So I don't know that it would hurt anything, but... I always err on the side of caution anyway. Um, like I said, this is kind of a freestyle swirl. I'm just pouring it in slowly. I'm not pouring in huge amounts because I don't want any color to over swirl with the other colors or take over one bar. Um, you might notice that I keep going around the outside. I find when you're doing swirls and, and swirls in melt and pour that have to be done particularly at cooler temperatures, which is pretty much all of them, um, that it's as you're doing little bits and little layers, the outside is what's going to set up first. That's going to start solidifying. And if you don't address it right away, if you don't put another bit of soap on top of it that's still warm, you're going to get really weird looking sides. And you might even end up with, with layers not adhering properly. Um, Yes, you can always spritz with alcohol in between. I do on occasion on these layers more to pop the bubbles. Um, but because uh, I keep pouring on those sides, it's not going to come apart because neither side is fully set up. Um, but uh, I don't like to spritz too much because it also, um, one of the great attributes of spritzing with um, rubbing alcohol is it does make your soap move. And that can help you or hurt you depending on what you're doing. And in a swirl, sometimes that can go against what you're wanting. You you pour it in, you get it where you want it, and then you spritz it and it goes everywhere and it just starts blending with the other colors if you're not careful. I sometimes see people um, spritzing a little overzealously with a uh, not a fine mister. I like to use a fine mister because it spreads out more quickly. You use less and it's less uh, disturbing to whatever you are spritzing, whether that's um, liquid soap or whether, you know, whether that's an embed or whatever. It's just uh, you have more control, um, or at least I do. I feel like I do. Um, but that's why you see me pouring anyway along the sides is I'm trying to avoid odd looking layers on the sides and areas where it, the layers may not stick because it's setting up. I'm not sure if I do it in this one, in this particular soap, but occasionally I'll take the, the little, one of the little thin sticks that I have that I'm, like I'm stirring with the, um, in the orange, those little, oh, silicon or plastic based um, stir sticks that look like popsicle sticks, that right there. Sometimes I'll do that and scrape along the sides too to make sure it's not just getting weird stripes all over the sides. Although the sides don't matter as much as everything else, but sometimes it helps it to um, stay as a, a unit rather than these solid weird chunks that aren't together. Um, this is, yeah, that's my last little dip in there. I filled it. Now for me, this, this mold kind of, I fight with it a little bit with how much it holds. This one was 42 ounces. That's what it was. And it was perfect. I used every, but just about every single drop. Oh no, I'm wrong. That's my neck soap. This one, I, I measured out way too much of some of them because because this mold has given me a fit. Sometimes I don't have enough. Sometimes I have too much. Um, and um, I always knew it was about about 38, four, 40 ounces, 42. And, and this one, I think I went um, a little overboard. I was just like, oh, let's put a couple extra chunks in just because. Because I'd rather have too much. Always would rather have too much. Um, up in the... Uh, kind of upper left corner you'll see some little um, soap rocks and you will see a kind of a separate video I don't get I don't catch the pour uh, because it wasn't a planned event it was oh I have leftover soap let me pour something I'm not gonna let that go to waste so I um, I pulled out a rectangle 
mold, that little white mold that you saw me move away, and I poured some more and then cut them into crystal shapes, crystal-ish shapes. So here's your finished product. Um, knowing me, I probably forgot something in here. Um, really, you just want to make sure that your temperatures are low for your soap type. If you're using another brand, if you're using Stevenson's or some of the other brands that are out there, um, just know your melting point. Stevenson's has a higher melting point, so it's going to set up faster. If you try to pour at 115, you're going to be in trouble. Um, this uh, mine pour about perfectly at um, between 115, 118, something like that for, for swirls. And yet there was one point I cut out the, the parts where I'm, you know, remelting or whatever, but I think I only had to remelt at the very end there. I didn't have to do it a lot. Maybe, maybe one of the buckets I ended up um, popping in the microwave for like 10 seconds. I like to, when it's the buckets with the, with the smaller the amount, the less you need. I actually had one that I popped it in for five seconds and that was perfect. Um, just enough to get the rest out of the bucket. Um, but you can see the glitter shows up nicely in the clear. If you just put glitter in one of the colors, you will see that as well. But the clear, um, to me, adds another dimension to that. Um, I like to use a clear and an opaque in opposition in my swirls. Um, I, I did have a few people tell me I should be calling it a galaxy soap instead, which, um, I mean, I planned what I planned, so it, it is what it is. And, um, I, I also make other galaxy soaps, so I wasn't that concerned about calling it one. I make a, a variety of different types of galaxy soaps and it, it does look like it could fit right in with them. Um, sort of, uh, I do some with planets and stars and that kind of stuff too, but it does kind of look like a space scape. Um, that one especially. Um, and any, any time you do a, a layer that isn't stirred kind of like the uh, acorn swirl, you're going to get more horizontal layers like this horizontal look. So you can easily get a camo look out of this style of pour. Um, and you'll see later, I have another video upcoming where I do one that ends up being like a camo. I wasn't thrilled with it and I redid sort of, I, I kept some and redid others and, um, got a little bit of a better swirl, more, more kind of like this one, but, uh, it's, I don't know. There are some people who are more experts at swirls. I'm not one of them. I just love trying them. And I know that I can always get something good looking out of it. If it means I have to, have to cut it differently or I have to, um, do a retry, I can, I can get it to look um, like something I enjoy. So that's my goal in doing these, but I am learning more and more. Honestly, when, when you hear other soapers in the soap group say it takes practice, they're not kidding. It just takes practice. I have one soap that I've done for a long time and it's, um, it's a very specific type of swirl that I do, but for some reason I, I can't always get it to work perfectly. I can't always get it to work the way I want, even when the temperatures are, are the same, the soap is the same, the fragrance is the same. Um, so, I mean, there's little factors that come in there. I was really pleased with the overall look of these, though. Um, but I will keep practicing, and I will keep making more combinations, because I have fun with that. That's one of the soap crystals. I just wanted to show you, um, so maybe you that'll entice you to watch the, the video on that one. It's going to be fairly short, because it's mostly just the cutting of them. Um, but the pour was pretty similar to what you saw here. I basically just poured it in a little bit quicker because they were cooling off. Um, thank you so much for watching any of my videos. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time, and it definitely helps my channel. Um, you see a little bit of streaks there. That is from the glitter moving as I cut. I'm going to go back and polish that off. Um, but thank you for watching. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please let me know. And um, I hope you like and subscribe. And I hope you've gotten something out of this. Some days I feel like I'm helping. Other days I feel like I'm not really. So I guess it depends on uh, what you're looking for. Um, I hope you have a great, di uh, good, great day. And pardon my stammering. That's just the way the day is. Thanks so much. Bye.